I'm good, man. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, brother. You tell me, how's everything? How's um, how's lockdown going? How's the isolation going and stuff? I'm getting used to it now, man. So it's all right now. It's not too bad. It feels like normal life now. So can't keep complaining about it. Yeah. God. Tell me about it, man. It just it feels normal now, doesn't it? Like three weeks later. Yeah. And it's just it's like... like that. Exactly. It just feels normal. Like, I, I don't even know how... It's gonna be like when we get straight back to actual normal life. You know what I mean? You know what? It's a shame because um, I think like two weeks after it was announced, I was at the it was a press conference at uh, in Angel Islington, wasn't it? You was meant to be on the uh, the the Bois Joyce card. I've, I don't know. Oh, what yeah, the yeah, name. yeah. I remember we done an interview with you. Um, have you heard anything like any updates of what the next step is? Like, have they said about? Perhaps doing it behind closed doors, or they're just kind of like keeping you in a loop. Um. Well, they put the date out eleventh of July. I don't know how mm-hmm. realistic that is now, seeing mm-hmm. the way things are going. And obviously, a, a lot of people have spoken behind closed doors, but there's been no confirmation on whether that show will be under closed um will be on under closed doors, but or behind closed doors, I should say. But um, I know the show hasn't been cancelled; it's still on. But how they're going to mm-hmm. go about it, I'm not sure yet. Did they like speak to you about um, a potential opponent? Is there anyone in particular that they had lined up? I haven't spoken about no potential opponent since then. I haven't spoken about nothing really. I haven't even spoken about a new date. I've just been told that it the show hasn't been cancelled. It's still the same show. The people are on the card are still on the card. As soon as mm-hmm. lockdown's done, we're going to find a way to pull it on. So I'm mm-hmm. guessing it may be behind closed doors, but um, yeah. You just wait and see, man. They just said that as soon as the lockdown's done, they can do what they're doing. I know there'll still be social distancing and stuff, and you can't obviously, no one's going to be rushing to pack out a 20,000 O2 arena. So they, they, will, they will take certain measures. I'm, I'm sure they will, but um, I just don't know what measures they're going to take. Do you know what I, I really enjoy about, about your career so far is that you, it's like you has kept like a way. And then, like, you've all of a sudden come on and now everybody's gotten to know you. Like, you was doing the... You was fighting at the charity dinners and stuff, weren't you? You was fighting at, like, hotels yeah, and stuff, I remember. Yeah. I remember last year when we come down to Peacock, we done an interview with you. And you told me, like, your last few fights have been at, like, dinner shows and everything. How What's that like for you, like, having to deal with, like, going from dinner shows to fight live on BT Sports? And now that a lot of people are getting to know more about you and getting to know what kind of, what kind of boxer you are. How do you deal with that? Um, it's it's good that that's what I want. Like, obviously, in the long run, do you know what I'm saying. But um, fighting on dinner shows was getting me comfortable. Like, getting me comfortable in the ring. Then my first show on with Frank, that was nerve wracking. That was like my debut again. I was kind of nervous. Um, mm-hmm. I was nervous even weighing in. I was weighing in, thinking, damn, like this is a different kind of platform. I've never weighed in live before, the day before anyone. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, never had one of those weigh-ins before. So. It, it it was it was different, but I got used to it kind of quickly, and now I'm just enjoying it. Like when I find out I've got a later slot, the the more excited I am to to fight. I, I'm not really nervous about it no more. I'm just more so excited and can't wait to to fight. And like the more the arena gets packed, the more excited I am. So I'm I'm, I'm getting used to it now, and I'm, and I'm happy. It's, my career's gone this way. Are you looking to take the British route? Or are you going on a different route? Because I know quite a few Frank Warren's fighters haven't taken the British route, such as at the Yard, Archie Sharp, and they all rank with governing bodies such as the WBO. Um, I believe yeah. like Archie Sharp got ranked with the WBO. Like, what's what's the route for you? Like, what are you looking to take that British route, or is it just to try and get as high as you can in the rankings? You know what? If I could take that British route, I would. I, I would. I'd actually love to. I'd love to take the British route because. You know what I'm saying? Being the best in Britain is one thing and then you take the next steps that you need to take to get to world level. Do you know what I'm saying? But sometimes mm. you can get ranked too early and, and get in a false sense of belief that you're ranked there because you're on that level. That makes sense. I'm not trying to discredit no one or anything, but you might start feeling like, yeah, I'm world level because I'm ranked. Do you know what I'm saying? But 
you, you, you want to take the right steps. The British title is a nice title to have as well. It's a good title to win. I'd love yeah. to win it and keep it, win it outright and keep it. Um, it would also help me gain experience in championship fights before I get to world level. Do you know what I'm saying? Rather mm-hmm. than just like going behind the scene fighting like uh, foreigners from for like the WBO in, in national in the continentals, whatever, and then ending up yeah. fighting for a world title because then you might come unstuck. I'm not saying you will, but you may come unstuck. So I feel like I want to take the British route, but if that's not an option, then I'll take the other route. But that's what I want. Mm. I've got to ask you the question: What on earth is going on with you, Lee Williams? Like, I don't know what I mean. I just seen on the Queensbury promotions yesterday, like Dev was doing a um, uh, an interview with Liam, and I, I just seen the tagline hits back, and I think it was something to do along them lines. Hits back with Liam Williams, like I'm I'm not like trying to stare something here, but I don't know what's actually happened between you and Liam. And I know like you're on two totally different paths right now. You're still. No, don't take this the wrong way. You're still more up and coming. He's on the verge of like a world title shot. What's actually happened? Because I never had used to Dan as like potential opponents or people that have got like an issue with each other. What's actually happened? You know what's so funny? After all that, we spoke and obviously it's all cool. But obviously at the time, all I was saying is me as a hungry young fighter, I want the British title. And if he's not willing to move on, I'm willing to fight him. And I still stand by that. I still stand by that. Like, Lynn Williams is a fight I would like to have. Do you know what I'm saying? At some point in my career. But all I'm saying is, if he wasn't going to move on from the British, I'm going towards British level. I want a British title fight. And if he wasn't going to move on, I was going to catch him there and fight him. And that's what I was saying. And obviously, he took it the wrong way, which is fine. I, I don't expect him not to. I know he's an angry guy. Started wigging out on Twitter and stuff. And I just find it funny. All these Welsh fans started mm-hmm. tweeting me all of that, like, just getting on to me saying you get knocked out. And I, <laughs> I, I, I just found it funny. I was getting I was getting a load of abuse, but I found it funny. And obviously, they, he was just asking them what happened that time. But I see him after, because we both fought in December. I see him after and we spoke. And I said to him, yo, I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just saying, if you don't move on, you'll fight. And he's like, yeah, no, I know. I'm just angry during camp and that. But he, he had the energy where he was like, oh, we won't fight kind of thing, because... I'm moving mm-hmm. on to world level. I'm like, that's cool. I'm just saying, I want, I want my shot at that British. And if it's you that, if it's you that has it, at the time I get there, I'm not gonna just wait till you move on. I, I will fight you because he's been holding on to British for a while. And there's a lot of fighters that are maybe mandatory mm-hmm. or high ranked that will just wait until he moves on. I'm not just willing to let him have a, have an easy round like that and just wait. I will fight him. I, that's just what I'm like. Isn't it? No, so, you know what? I, what I, was... I respect you for that because he is obviously. Um, he's on the verge of getting that fight with Andrade and um, you know what in all honesty he deserves it as well because he's he's been on a good role especially after them Liam Smith fights he's he's like a different fighter but I respect you for wanting that fight because that's a massive step up you know you've got to look at it he's at a certain point in your career you're still 14 and 0 right? 12, 12. 14 oh, sorry 12 and 0 you're still up and coming but I respect you for wanting that fight um Obviously, he's got. Listen, if the world title shot comes along, he's gonna obviously take that fight. You know, we have to, you have to respect that because that's what he's been going no, for his whole life. How do you, how do you think he gets on against Andrade? I think he'll do better than Luke Keeler, but I think Andrade wins. I think Andrade wins. I just think Andrade is a is a is a very skilled boxer. Um, to be honest, Williams has changed his game a lot. He's not as he doesn't rush as much as he used to and stuff like that. So. He would try and box, but when you're boxing against someone with a longer reach and, do you know what I'm saying, so, and that's as, sli- as slick as he is and as talented as he is and works hard and also he's not on, he's not on a decline, he's, he's getting better and better. I, I just think it's, it's, it's difficult. But at the same time, there's not much of a big arsenal because they're basically the same weight. They're both uh, like middleweights that pay much of middleweight to do their thing, really. So, no. It's just who, who the weight suits best. But I just think Andre is, is more skillful, more talented, longer reach, more to his game. Um, and I just think he wins, really. Give me a few names that, Dave. The names that, realistically, you can see yourself in the ring with, um, especially going towards that British outright. Because it's like, it is exciting. You know, I, Obviously, there's a potential fight with Linus, but used to being with different promoters doesn't really help because that's probably the biggest downfall in boxing but like who, who have you who's the ideal fight for you next that fight's been a potential fight for like 10 years bro. <laughs> so I'm not even <laughs> looking at that as a 
potential fight. But um, that's like a good say, fight. It, it, is, it is it is still a good fight. I'm not biting that up. I'm not saying he's not a good fight. I'm just saying that's been a potential fight for how long? Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm I'm tired of that. I'm bored of that. But realistically, I don't know, man. I actually don't know because I've said who. Well, Linus Bradpools couldn't get none of them. They didn't take it for the southern area. Um, Mark Kefron's now moving up to super middle. So yeah. it was just one of those ones where it's, it's like, obviously Liam Williams is moving on to world levels. I I only want the top guys. Obviously Felix Cash is with Matchroom. That's a fight I'd love as well. If he's with Matchroom, being with two different promoters would probably be difficult, especially when we're both at that building stage. He's going towards European. I never, I haven't even won a title yet, so that's probably unrealistic in that sense. What about so Joe Mullender? That's in boxing again. Yeah, he, he he hasn't fought since he fought um Liam Williams. Liam Williams. Yeah. He hasn't fought since then, so that'll be a nice fight. I'd take that as well. But mm-hmm. if there's fighters there, but who I'm really keen on fighting, I, I listen, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know anymore, man, because I've asked for who I've asked for, we haven't got them, so it's just whoever now. It'll come, man, just be a bit patient. I remember you, yeah, I'm when, sure, we yeah. Used to spe- when we used to speak, when I first started doing this, and I used to say to you, look, be patient, man, trust me, it's the route you're coming, you're coming up, nobody's, Really not. It's the early stages of your career, man. But um, you, listen, time's on your hand. Twelve and oh, you you'll get there, man. Um, one final question: We, when this is all over and done, I hope to God it is soon because I can't stand being at home. I'd rather be out there doing this face to face with you. <laughs> yeah, Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders. I asked you two years ago, and I believe your answer was you think. Billy Joe Saunders is good enough that you still think Canelo would have too much. Two years later, do you still go by that, or do you? give Billy Joe Saunders more of a chance? I still go about that. I still go about that. Um, I think it being that super middle probably suits Canelo more as well. Um, mm-hmm. We've seen him perform that perform like super middle. Well, not really have we, but he's gone up the weights and still look good. Gone up to like heavyweight and knocked out yeah. that heavyweight champion, you know what I'm saying? So, I think uh-huh. I think he's got too much. I, 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 listen, Billy Joe Saunders is a good fighter, but to just to just go out there and say he beats Canelo, you're lying in it. To say you're rooting for him is different. To say you think he can do it is different. But to say you think he wins is 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 I, I would say is a lie, man. I don't listen. Canelo's one of the one of the best fighters in the world. You can put him pound for pound number one. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You don't get to pound for pound number one just by doing nothing. You've got the best track record. Out of a lot of fighters, you can say him and yeah, you can say he probably got one of the best track record out of all the fighters right now. Um, three or four division world, world champion, maybe you want to count his his um his win at super middle, but yeah. at the end of the day, Billy Joe, as as good as he is, he's not even ranked as a top five pound for pound fighter. Do you know what I'm saying? Like not in any yeah. respect of the way I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. That he's not ranked as a top pound for pound fighter, and that's because of the fights he's had on British level. Yeah, he's beat everyone there is domestically, hundred percent. He went out and beat David Lemieux, but what wins does he have that makes you think that his best performance can beat Canelo? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, all probably I'm have to win on the facts in it. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Well, it probably if it is in obviously uh, Vegas. On the Golden Boy show, he's gonna have to if he's if it's likely to win on points, he'd probably have to win at least ten of the twelve rounds just to get a judge's decision. But, but that's what I'm saying. I don't even think that's an easy points win for him. You know what I'm mm. saying? I don't think that's. Exactly. I, think, yes. I, I think it's a hard fight. I think it's a hard fight. I think mm. he's got more of a chance of. Oh, let me not even say that. I was gonna say he probably has more of a chance of beating Golovkin if he doesn't get knocked out. But do you know what I mean? Like, Canelo, they, Canelo's uh, a special fighter, man. One day, uh, Denzel Bentley in the ring with the likes of Golovkin and uh, Canelo, Billy Joe Saunders. Listen, they don't want no smoke with me, but I'll, I'll ruin their career. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a long way away from that, but I'll get there one day. You'll get there one day. And obviously, we've been following you since the very beginning. Never forget that, yeah? Listen, I was going to say that. You, you, you're a G because you were probably like, the first person to interview me out of all these platforms and you've kept in touch, man. So I respect that. I, I've always got time for you, bro, like. Bro, I'm listen, sure no whenever you that. want an interview, whenever you want anything, bro, any help, because I prefer doing the uh, the up-and-coming fighters, man. You get a lot more out of them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And um, they, they they appreciate more. So I'm always here to help, man. And I always, I've always appreciated your time. And when you see James, make sure you slap him for me as well, because just give him, <laughs> slap. give him two slaps. But <laughs> now, listen, Dennis, 
I appreciate yeah. your time, my brother. Thank you very much. Nice uh, stay in well. contact, man. I hope you and the family stay safe throughout this tough time. And um, you too, bro. Hopefully, I'll see you on fight week when it gets announced again. Uh, thanks, bro. No, bro. I'll see you soon. Oh, man, man. Thank, Thank you very much. Cool.